Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have a new guest, Ram Lakshmi Narayanan. He is an IT professional with 25 plus years in analytics experience and he is the founder of Hindumesia.ai. And we are going to have a very interesting conversation today where he walks us through how he is observing patterns of Hindu hate. Hindu Mesia, by the way, means Hindu hatred. I think that is more appropriate rather than Hindu phobia. Nobody is afraid of Hindu. So that's a misnomer in my opinion. So let's welcome our guest and ask him his opinion as to whether Hindu phobia is even appropriate. Ram, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you, uh, Shri. You know, thanks for having me on your uh, platform. Thanks for giving me the time to help me explain uh, what this uh, tool is uh, all about. So you chose Hindu Mesia instead of Hindu phobia. Why? Uh, honestly speaking, the handle was available in Twitter. <laughs> so I went. <laughs> That's and a good explanation. It, <laughs> it was actually an article. It was roughly about a year and one month ago when uh, I think it was Jaggi of Swarajya, right? So he wrote an article yes. as to why it should be Hindu Mesia. I was actually building my model in parallel at the time. So I was figuring out what should be, how should I brand it actually. Mm -hmm. So I read the article. Immediately, I went and looked at the handle availability on Twitter. It was available. I just went and looked at it. That's how I think oh. it started, actually. Oh, okay. So having said that, you know, I know this question keeps coming up, actually. Why are you calling it Hindu Mesia? I believe Hindu Mesia, Hindu Dvesha, Hindu Phobia. They are all here to stay. I think they'll stay. So I think it's good to uh, just adopt it, embrace it, and then go with it, actually. So, so I am not particularly wedded to any particular terminology or, or definition. I am quite okay with calling it Mesia, Dvesha or even Hinduphobia. I even call it Hinduphobia. I have no issues at all with it. I think all of the three will co will have to coexist in my opinion. And uh, viewers, you can send in your questions uh, using the hashtag Ask Ram. And this is going to be a presentation now where he kind of shows us what he is trying to do in this website and it's uh, very very engrossing so let's go ahead and invite ram to start showing his uh, presentation take it away sir yeah thank you Vashri. Uh, just a check actually so you see my uh, slides on the screen right yes, screen? yes 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 okay. all right uh, very good yeah uh, let me uh, get uh, going this is expected to take uh, people about roughly 30 to 35 minutes i have about a dozen slides to cover and then we'll probably have a QA session at the end. Uh, you know, one of the first questions that people ask me is to how did it all, uh, you know, began actually, right? So I think uh, it would be interesting. Uh, the genesis of it, uh, it all began with Mr. Mani Shankaraya, <laughs> former uh, Congress MP, who made a very uh, disparaging remark, you know, about uh, Modi's uh, uh, social status as a child TV and uh, back. Uh, leading up to the uh, 2014 election campaign. You know, I, th I thought it was quite negative, uh, vicious, and, and even condescending, you know, with his comments about uh, that comment kind of caught my, uh, you know, uh, attention. Uh, I wanted to analyze his thoughts. So what I did was, uh, this was a little bit later, not exactly in 2014, perhaps in 2015 or 2016. I've been uh, you know, debating about this. So I found that he was writing articles on NDTV.com. So I, I, uh, I scraped uh, 150 of his articles on NDTV, ran through an analytic model, a primitive uh, model, I would I would say, back in the day, uh, quantified and visualized his writings. I do have it actually on public tableau, uh, those busies. As part of the model, you know, I was able to determine the kind of emotions and the sentiments he exhibits. Uh, quite naturally, you know, it was very, very uh, negative and it was very revealing uh, for me you know i was but one thing uh, uh, that caught my attention again was you know, i was surprised as to how one can harbor so much of hate just for one individual you know this exercise about five or six years ago provoked me into doing something different you know and then one thing led to another and i ended up uh, picking this uh, topic up actually okay yeah, why not measure uh, something on social media you know, there are many entities, right? Many individuals countering such hate, no, anti hate, hate no. you know, there are a few groups, advocacy groups, even in the US, uh, that do some grassroots uh, work. There are folks who have started writing about it on uh, different uh, platforms. And there are many webinars, uh, many podcasts, uh, also to deal with this uh, menace, right? So I looked around to see uh, what value I could add. 
and wanted to do something different that will uh, complement some of the efforts that are currently underway within our uh, dharmic uh, ecosystem. And then I also dug deeper within myself, you know, and uh, kind of leveraged my own uh, uh, competency, if you will, and corporate background in developing uh, performance management solutions in the data analytics uh, space. So that's kind of how uh, it all got uh, started. Uh, I have a cricket buddy of mine from uh, from Chicago who helped me uh, bring this to, uh, to life. The tool was launched in uh, March of uh, 2022. It's been about what, five, six months right now. And uh, that's how it all uh, got started. So what I'll do now, uh, you know, folks, is uh, let me walk you through some of the features of it during the course of this uh, presentation. I'm just going to skip over to the next slide. No, uh, I'm kind of positioning this as a performance management tool. You know, uh, as an IT person, as an IT professional, you know, I've implemented a number of uh, analytic solutions. Uh, performance management, you know, being uh, one of them. You know, the focus of such solutions is to provide to corporate leadership a quantifiable way of measuring performance against goals. You know, I'm sure, uh, Shri, you know, even in your background, you probably would have come across a number of such solutions. Different areas of corporate functions, you know, have their own performance metrics, you know, operations or sales, marketing, finance, etc. Such metrics are presented to the leadership. The tool or the vehicle uh, that's used to present uh, such metrics is actually called a scorecard. As I was kind of evaluating how should I present the anti-Hindu hate that I've been observing on social media, I kind of uh, started answering many questions uh, within myself, actually. So one was, you know, uh, why can't I, yeah, I'm sorry, skipped it, sorry. Uh, you know, why can't I, uh, uh, you know, measure anti-Hindu hate? Why not a scorecard? And why can't we do it in real time? So, you know, one question led to the other, and then, you know, we finally identified uh, uh, an approach to this uh, solution. We kind of uh, implemented this. So that's how the whole scorecard, or the, what I call as the global anti Hindu scorecard, came into, uh, you know, uh, existence. As I've said, it's a performance management tool. That's how I'm kind of positioning it. It's a performance management tool uh, to help direct and focus our efforts when i say our, our collective efforts the collective efforts of the thermic ecosystem at curbing anti-hindu hate it's an analytical approach to countering uh, anti-hindu hate there are many advocacy groups who can use such uh, metrics to help with our uh, grassroots advocacy it will only complement i think uh, their, uh, their efforts that's how i see this as a tool now uh, you know, uh, Sri, I'm going to uh, uh, walk through. I would uh, I would urge the users to log into Indomisia.ai, which is the uh, the website uh, wherein uh, you can see this uh, global uh, anti-Hindu uh, scorecard. It's the heart of the tool. The scorecard is the heart of the tool, as I said. Look up the website. That's what you will actually see. You know, it consists of uh, aggregate statistics from Twitter on a real time basis. You will basically three three sections. You will see three sections. One is uh, the daily statistics section, which will kind of plot a 24 hour uh, trend in UTC time. What we do here is we scan uh, Twitter pretty much uh, uh, real time or near real time, and then uh, scan the tweets, feed them through the AI uh, model. And then uh, for tweets that are flagged, we plot them on a 24-hour clock. That's what you see on the daily statistics page at the top of the uh, uh, website. That's the real-time statistics on a daily basis. The same statistics in the next section, which is one section below, they are kind of aggregated on a daily basis and plotted on a monthly graph. You will see that below. So you will see a 30-day or a 31-day graph at the bottom on the left-hand side. And then to the right, the same statistics are kind of, uh, you know, uh, classified into what I call as anti-Hindu intensity, uh, which is subjective uh, classification and then plotted on a pie chart. So these are the two main sections where uh, the, the trends are uh, plotted on a daily basis as well as on a monthly basis. 
the last section that kind of got added, uh, I think it was in May when we enhanced uh, our, uh, our uh, website where we allowed folks to submit tweets to the engine. So they can just copy and paste the Twitter URL, submit tweets to the engine, tweets that they think need to be passed through our AI engine. If it's not in our model, we will actually accept it. If it's in our model, uh, the engine will basically uh, you know, revert, you know, revert back with the uh, with the hate intensity, you know, hate intensity that is uh, that's been uh, at classified. That's basically what uh, what the website is. So there are three sections: daily statistics, uh, monthly statistics, and also a great feature for end users uh, to submit tweets to the engine. So that's what the, the website actually has. Those are the salient features of the uh, website. Then. Uh, one of the questions uh, that uh, repeatedly uh, comes up uh, in all the private conversations that I have on this uh, tool, right? So how does it all work? It's pretty simple, actually. You know, we basically scan Twitter live for tweets and select a random sample of tweets based on certain topics. You know, the Twitter API that you use with Python R or whatnot, whichever language that we use. We use Python here, actually. So, uh, you know, it gives you certain filtering mechanism. So we use sort of broad based topics so that we know we have to collect the relevant ones for our feeds. Example, if it's cricket related, right? We don't uh, scan those tweets. Those are not of interest to us. So we use certain topics kind of broad based so that we can source them into our, uh, into our model. So we take those tweets, we run those tweets through an AI model, uh, a proprietary AI model, if you will, uh, uh, run them through it. And then uh, the model flags the tweet as either Indonesian or not. Once it's done, we take all the flagged tweets and kind of quantify and visualize it uh, on the website that you actually uh, saw. Okay. This flagging is actually based on an anti-hindu lexicon that we have developed you know i'm an i'm an insider to the hindu tradition so i do know what hinduism is though not an expert at it i also know what uh, anti-hindu hate looks like actually so we developed an anti-hindu uh, lexicon so that we can use that uh, lexicon in the ai model flag the tweet as anti-hindu uh, the way intensity the other component of the model is flagging something as uh, toxic, severe, or moderate, right? So we have three classifications. They are quite subjective in nature. I can give you an example. I'll draw an analogy. Let's say you score 96 out of 100 on a, on a paper, on an exam. Uh, one professor could, could grade it as A+. plus. Another professor would may just grade it as A, right? So it depends. So uh, the, the intensity classification is quite subjective. You know, you know, somebody else could have classified it somewhat differently, actually. So, so we just classify it in three different ways. Toxic, uh, severe, and kind of moderate, actually. And then we quantify and visualize all of them that you see on the uh, on the uh, uh, website. That's basically how the uh, model works. Okay. In terms of how the tool can help us, when I say help us help the Dharmic ecosystem, right? I think it's a great tool for, uh, you know, stakeholder uh, engagement. You know, one can use the statistics, the data behind this uh, tool in many different ways. I'm going to give you those examples here, actually, you know. See, we all know anti-Hindu hate, hindu misia or Hindu-phobia is real because we are all part of the Dharmic ecosystem. We understand what it is, but there are a lot of people who keep refusing the realities of anti hindu hate. We can help them educate based on the statistics and the data set that we have. Those who are unaware of it, they must be educated as well. Actually, It's important we start doing it uh, by, by educating lawmakers, law enforcement officials, SM organizations, so on, so educational institutions, etc. You know, to the realities of anti hindu I'm not saying it's not happening, actually, but the tool gives you the statistics and the data behind so that you can go armed with adequate facts. So when you are actually engaging in grassroots uh, advocacy. And then we, the Hindus, right, we are the ones who are affected by this uh, hate sentiment. Uh, we can use ourselves. You know, there are a lot of us who are interested in acting on some of these things. 
they can use the data sets that we produce. We produce a number of charts and all that stuff, actually, to educate their own uh, you know, local law enforcement or, uh, or lawmakers. Even, even perhaps even you know force uh, you know SN companies, uh, social media companies to act on it by simply tweeting, mass reporting the tweets or the handle, you know so on and uh, uh, so forth. Last but not the least, right? Uh, it will be a great uh, what do I say? It will be a great opportunity to engage with uh, many social media influencers, uh, media personnel, you can engage with think tanks public intellectuals to expose and basically raise awareness. Uh, we have been so far ever since the launch in the in ever since we launched it in March, we have been focusing on measuring and monitoring so far. If you look at our tagline, it says measure, monitor and expose. So we've been measuring and monitoring so far. It's only since the last month we have started focusing on exposing uh, some of the hate that comes out. What we do, we have produced in recent, in the last few weeks, we have produced a bunch of top end handles, you know, uh, that we see on Twitter. So we'll probably do a lot more from that standpoint. So our focus will be not just on measuring and monitoring, but also in exposing those handles and tweets that continue to peddle anti uh, into uh, it. We produce monthly reports that provide aggregate statistics, some top end charts, so on and so forth, uh, as well as point out some of the key events, you know, that uh, triggered anti into it. I'll probably, uh, towards the end of the call, I'll probably uh, show a sample monthly report, uh, uh, the one that we produce for month of uh, uh, August. Okay. 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 Uh, you know, this tool, I think, can lead us to multiple uh, multiple benefits. When we start engaging with uh, with stakeholders with facts, that too, collectively, that's very important, you know. We basically help raise our voice, right, and be heard. People cannot simply refuse us anymore if we go with uh, facts. Our concerns, if we raise our voice uh, collectively, that's important. Our concerns will get the required attention with lawmakers, law enforcement officials, media outlets, etc., so on and so forth. You know, to this effect, right, we have actually started publishing some monthly reports, as I said, and I'll be showing you one by the end of the uh, call. Uh, you can find them in our uh, reports section as well. You can go and download some of the past reports that we have uh, uh, produced. It will elevate our concerns, uh, you know, we will no longer be relegated to the sites with facts uh, and with with voice i think people will hear us our concerns will will get the uh, attention that it rightfully deserves with law enforcement officials lawmakers media companies so on and uh, so forth uh see there are a lot of hindus who are waiting to act on certain things it will probably enable them uh, to act uh, on on the data set that we that we produce, a lot of people come to me asking for certain questions about the model, the data set, so on and so forth. Hopefully, you know, uh, with uh, with the actions that we collectively uh, uh, produce, uh, we'll start uh, seeing its effect on uh, Twitter, uh, not just on Twitter, perhaps even in some of the other uh, other platforms, as we start exposing handle level uh, uh, information. Then, in terms of our partners, right, so uh, we collaborate with two partners today, actually. Uh, my in makers, we started collaborating with them uh, uh, from month of May onwards, where they publish our monthly reports. You know, we produce monthly reports uh, the f usually the first week of a month for the previous month with the previous month's uh, statistics. So they carry our reports in their uh, platform. Uh, on a on a monthly basis, and then with India Facts, we recently started a this month in Hindu phobia series with India Facts, where we get into the weeds, if you will, you know. So we produce a top ten uh, handle list, and then we also identify some of the more egregious uh, tweets that we see within that particular month's uh, data set. We produce a report, 
and it gets published. We just got started very, very, uh, uh, very, very uh, recently, actually, on it. You know, we are also in discussions with few other uh, stakeholders. In fact, with one of the stakeholders, I don't want to reveal the name. It's not closed yet. Eh? Closed yet. We are in discussions with them to be able to exchange uh, uh, data uh, that we uh, that we collect. In fact, we are in pilot mode. We have given them some sample data. They are working on integrating uh, their platform with our platform so that they can take a feed on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. Uh, it, it would be an on-demand basis. It's up to them, actually. So we are working with them to be able to provide our data set for their own analysis and research purposes. You know, They are actually an advocacy group as well. They are monitoring and taking into it on different platforms. Since I already have an automated tool, they want to be able to leverage the tool, to gather the, uh, uh, you know, collect the data set and use it for their own, uh, for their own purposes. Uh, there, there are one or two other prominent institutions that do want to use my AI-based classification that I already have, and some preliminary discussions have happened. I'm talking to them pretty much on a weekly or a, or a bi-weekly basis to see, you know, how best we can collaborate and take forward uh, our relationship and help establish a sustainable long-term partnership uh, as well. So that's where we are as far as the partnership uh, situation is uh, uh, concerned. Then uh, that's pretty much it, uh, Shri. So I think I was able to, uh, uh, at least on a, on a brief scale, if you will, you know, be able to show you what this uh, tool is all about. On the screen that you see right now, you have our handles. I would certainly request uh, uh, all of your support for my uh, for my uh, for my tool for my handles. If you have any questions, if you want to share any feedback, you can always send an email to me. Uh, I have it listed there. It's contact at indomesia.ai. My Twitter handle is at the rate of Indomesia. Uh, and my Instagram handle is at the rate of Indomesia.ai. Although, you know, I am not too active on Instagram. I am very active on Indomesia. I would certainly love to hear back from you, uh, your feedback, your questions, so on and so forth. And then we will try to revert back uh, uh, you know, as soon as we can. Uh, uh, Shri, what I would like to do, I'm going to have to stop sharing my screen and share another one. I have a monthly report that I want to review with the with audience. Yeah, but before that, I just have one question. Uh, somebody yeah. is complaining that uh, they are unable to open the site. Is there an HTTPS or something that needs to be put? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, they should be able to open. Just working. Okay. Um, um, you you want to check real quick? Yeah, let me. Uh, yeah, let me check. Uh, one second, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some people are saying they opened it. Some have not been able to open it. I mean, if the connectivity is open, it. okay, it is opening. Never mind. I think uh, Raghavan, you may want to check your uh, Wi-Fi. So wonderful. Sorry about that. Let's go to the other one. You said you wanted to close this and open another uh, app or something like that. Newsletter you're going to show. So please go ahead. Let me know what you see right now. Yeah, I, we see the report now. You see the report now, right? I've, I've just yeah. changed the uh, change there. So let me just, uh, it's out there on the screen. So if you see my me turning around, I'm turning around to the other monitor. Right, so, right, right. Yeah. That's yeah. So this is a monthly report. Uh, it has uh, three pages. So we started producing this from month of April onwards. So it kind of uh, uh, collects or provides, I would say, uh, a monthly uh, statistics, monthly aggregate statistics. It's important to understand that actually. You know, we have an anti Hindu uh, summary uh, section here where it kind of indicates or points out the number of tweets flagged by the model for that particular month, what's the daily average for that particular month, uh, what's the highest day, uh, how many number of tweets were flagged, highest number of tweets flagged for a particular day. It was in this particular case. Uh, there were 1,598 tweets flagged on August 14th. Uh, lowest uh, was on August 28th with 1,323 tweets. And then the, the section below kind of indicates the change 
from the previous uh, month okay then scroll down there is the anti-hindu intensity as i told you right you know intensity is a subjective uh, classification you know so what we classify as toxic we found about 69 percent of the uh, uh, tweets as uh, toxic and about 25.7 percent as severe 5.3 percent as moderate so we just brought them on a, on a pie chart here actually and then the one below indicates whether uh, indicates the trend from the previous uh, month in the second page which is actually a new page now since august uh, since the month of August, we have started including top 15 prominent handles that kind of propagate anti-Hindu hate. So this was not there from uh, in, in the in, in the past months. So since we have started exposing the handles very recently, we have started looking at it uh, from a handle standpoint. So you know we are trying to pilot this with the top 15 prominent handles list. Uh, you know it could be top 20. It can even be top 25. But we just, you know, it, it fit the screen here. So I just said, okay, let's just pilot with top 15. As you can see, you know, these are standard Hindu folks, you know, the, the usual suspects are <laughs> listed here. It's certainly not a surprise. So this is how uh, uh, we want to produce this here. So it's top 15 prominent handles uh, based on handle name and number of anti-Hindu tweets flagged by the uh, model. And then the third page is... Uh, some general anti-Hindu observations for the entire month, if you will. You know, you have daily trends. I just put, I take the data, plot them on a monthly graph, and then show you number of anti-Hindu tweets pretty much on a daily basis. You can see the trend. And then uh, on the remarks section, it's kind of observations, if you will. Uh, what You know, the kind of events, geopolitical events, you know, it could be political, social, cultural, whatnot, events, festivals, so on and so forth that kind of triggered anti-Hindu hate. And in some cases, what kind of uh, attack as well, actually. If you recollect, I think it was in Rajasthan, I believe so, I don't remember I don't remember exactly, but there was a nine-year-old Dalit boy who died. And then I think, I think a teacher beat them or something like that. That kind of triggered anti-Hindu hate. Right, so what you right. see here, uh, Sri, right, you know, in the name of caste activism, there is a lot of ampli amplification of anti-Hindu hate. That's what I actually kind of observed in the month of August. I see, I saw a lot of them. I've been looking at the data set since March. I do know there's a lot of uh, caste attacks on Hinduism, but I thought the month of August, I saw a little bit more than what I usually actually see. So I make these remarks. So generally go through uh, what happened during that entire month and put in about 10 to 12 bullet points, kind of a, a crisp uh, summary of uh, events that kind of triggered the anti-Hindu hate. And below is the methodology. It's important for people to understand what the methodology is. You know, remember, uh, machine flags a tweet as anti-Hindu or not. It's not been validated. All the aggregate tweets, at least, they have not been validated uh, by us before including it in the stats. So that we call out. Tweets are sourced 24 by 7, sampled based on relevant topics, which is what I actually mentioned before. These tweets are run through an AI model that flags them as anti-Hindu or not. I'm basically reading it out for the benefit of the audience. Aggregate statistics contained are based on tweets flagged by the AI model. Aggregate statistics in page one and three, the first page, all aggregate, page three, which is all aggregate, are included prior to the validation of the model results. However, in page two that you see, which is the top 15, we select those handles you know, based on tweet count, followership count and uh, the verification status of the handle. So this is how we produce these monthly reports. As an extension of this, as I said, we've started a This Month in Indophobia series with India Facts. Uh, we just got started about two weeks ago uh, for month of July. So there's one going to be produced hopefully in the next week or so. We'll put one for August as well. So we're starting to expose uh, uh, some of these handles and tweets that uh, that are uh, that contribute to the manners of uh, you know and uh, into the hit as far as the model is concerned i do have to call this out you know we are assessing model performance uh, we will certainly undertake refinements to improve our results as required you know the whole model was put together see the way ai and machine learning or deep learning works uh, some of you may already know 
it it kind of uh, in in you know trains itself on a historic data set now there is no historic anti indo data set available so we had to rely on certain generic data sets available uh, to train the model uh, and with this tool that's available i am hoping to be able to build a customized anti indo data set for the dharmic community to use if people want to build in you know future uh, ai models i'm sure i'm probably the first person tree to uh, to come up with an ai model to flag tweets but i'm certainly not the last i'm sure you know uh, there are initiatives underway uh, to come up with a lot more improved uh, improved uh, model uh, performance and uh, results that's basically what i wanted to share with you uh, shri so this is the report we hope to be able to do more to expose uh, you know handles and tweets that, uh, that are causing us a uh, uh, lot of hardship and menace for the uh, dharmic community so so one question from a guy called raguram he says i saw the monthly stats i can't understand the increase in toxic intensity and less in the severe and moderate scale how do you measure it it's a good question actually so i have also observed the same actually see uh, uh, some of the handles that pedal into anti indo hate they have been suspended you know see there are a lot of troll handles uh, if you I'll, i'll just go i'll just go to this one just to answer that question if you yeah. see these handles right they don't have too many tweets if you look at audrey's tweets right, she probably has 16 tweets the entire month that the model mm. flag you look mm. at iam council has 15 tweets these things don't add up much this will probably add up to what about 200 to 300 tweets not more but we flag mm. a lot more right there are a lot of troll handles they sit and that's all they do you know i i have seen a number of handles that are uh, that have 58 to uh, 70 80 up to even 100 tweets on a monthly basis uh, that are flat many of these handles are suspended uh when we started doing uh, the top 30 and top 35 some top n uh, lists about uh, three or four weeks ago by you, you know from the time i started uh, you know preparing the data set for my top n chart right and before it got published you know many handles were even suspended because these uh, uh, for the month of march i remember i did a top 35 handles list i did not focus on just prominent handles i just focused on number of tweets flag top end. and when i looked at the top 35 12 of those handles were already suspended by twitter with no action from our side maybe some of us probably reported those tweets actually all the handles they were all suspended uh, my hunch is that's what it is i don't have a complete story on it but my hunch is i have looked at just two months in march and april and i did a top 35 or top 30 for april same story about 12 handles were already suspended in it actually by the time we got to uh, august my hunch is uh, a lot of these troll handles you know these handles do not have a lot of engagement they don't have too many likes they don't have too many quotes retweets comments so on and so forth these are all troll handles extremely toxic in nature you know extremely toxic tweets you know i do have those tweets with me it's just that you know when you click the tweet url those tweets are gone from the website but i have collected all the tweets i can see them i can see why twitter has actually suspended them uh, that would be my uh, uh, answer that's all i know i've looked at it from uh, from march i've looked at it from april i have not looked at those uh, data sets for may june and subsequent months once i do it i'll be able to pull together a story i'm planning to do something for this year maybe i'll have a year on report where i could report on some of these things so i'll start working on it but this is all uh, i have so far i've seen i think they are getting uh, getting suspended um these are incredible uh, statistics and data ram congratulations to you i have a couple of observations now sure. um, so you, you you talked about these troll handles right now what you could also do is to take this analysis to the next level where you can see that somebody who has practically no unique tweets but all they are doing is retweeting or trying to amplify something those kinds of stuff also we can start qualitatively flagging maybe that needs to be reported to twitter saying that this is this has the sole purpose of only retweeting that's true they wake up and pedal anti hindu hate that's what i see uh, sri 
but as you know very well right so we have you know this is all in voluntary mode everything happens in voluntary mode right so i'm not right, 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 right. corporate standpoint so i'm trying to put a manual process in place once i have a process in place i'll be able to automate some of them actually but uh, but 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 to your point to your suggestion yes yeah uh, those are some of the things we want to be able to uh, want to be able to uh, do it falls under the realm of social network analysis it's in our web pipeline uh, it, hopefully it will happen soon <laughs> you know you know um, one of the things i would like our viewers to do is to like what ram said go to his website familiarize yourself with it he is just taking one particular set of keywords or something of that nature and generating all this data which is why he's saying this is a great analysis tool you could use this in your business i think what ram is looking for is some sort of inputs of that nature so that there is a more you know he can he can monetize this a little bit better just like me who was just doing this because i love bharat varsha you know a lot of us have this thing it's in our blood we say that look this is you know whatever i am today this country made me what i am today it is being dragged by some mischievous people and we want to try and show them for what they are and that's exactly what we are doing now Uh, so uh, long and short of it ram is this is not the only platform which peddles hate 4ch and telegram are two other handles that have all uh, platform that do a lot of this stuff now are these also available as an api so you could perhaps get their data just a 20000 dollar question <laughs> uh, shriek if uh, see the the a model that uh, that we put together is will work on text based input not okay. uh, images actually so it won't work on instagram if it's text based we have to tweak it it will work only for twitter because you know we have, we have put a model we have put a model in place that's not kind of generic so we are trying to refactor it if you will you know so we are trying to create an api because we are in discussions as i said with some prominent institutions they want to access our ai classifier so we have it in our uh, in our list to be able to make it little bit more generic so if it becomes little bit more generic then as long as it's text input you know 140 characters or 200 characters or it could be even 300 400 what not as long as it's it's it, it's text they should be able to feed it into the model and get the results yeah wonderful ram and uh, i don't see any other questions so i guess we will call it a wrap now thank you so much for taking the time out to walk us through your model viewers do go and visit his website whenever he's uh, retweeting on whether it is retweeting or whether whenever he's tweeting on twitter or on uh, posting on instagram if you are on that platform please do retweet it help him grow this thing and and we all benefit from a thriving hindu media dot ai platform and i i really hope that the viewers also you know pass this on share this video so people can benefit there are lots of benefits in this and this is a very fast moving feed i mean uh, i can expect i can see that many might get inspired and jump in and start doing this so please do uh, retweet his stuff do follow him whether it is twitter or instagram and he's going to be adding more handles and as and when those things happen we will keep you informed thank you very much ram all the best to you and we will stay tuned with you hopefully we'll be having you back very soon for maybe september data thank you very much namaskar thank you shree thanks for hosting me thanks for providing me an opportunity to help explain to your audience about hindunesia.ai appreciate it